Um, CBC, when your white blood count is up, what does that mean? Infection. Some things don't show up as infection with the white blood count being high, but some do. Urinalysis, infection. Free T3, I mentioned that. If that's low, you're going to have fatigue. Even if it's in the, quote, normal range of a lab. And let's talk about what a normal range is. Normal does not mean normal. It means that certain standard deviations above and below the mean, you know, in a certain graph that's made statistically. But what do we find? In our population, we don't like to be on the lower side of normal. We want to be on the upper side of normal. So we have to tweak the labs and treat the person rather than treat just the labs. So our normals are different than standard lab normals. So DHEA, it's a hormone. We can take it as a pill. People take it all the time. They don't think of it as a hormone. But it's very good for the immune function. And actually, the amount of DHEA that is in your body actually computes to your number of years alive, longevity. Estradiol, very important. What typically happens to menopausal women? What happens to their energy level? Estrogen goes down, energy goes down. Pain goes up, memory goes down. Cardiac C-reactive protein shows inflammation. Lipoprotein little a, atherosclerotic marker, can show de decrease in oxygen in the blood. Very often people have pain just because of low vitamin D. There's probably not one person in this room that has adequate vitamin D levels. I don't see anyone who's tan. Maybe you're tan. Do you guys work out in the sun at all? You do. Take lots of walks. You need at least half hour to an hour a day, full body sun, to get about 15,000 units of vitamin D. So we give out little pills for all of us who don't go out in the sun that much. We'd like to, but we don't. But it can be used to heal pain like that. Is D over the counter, or is that a D is over-the-counter, or it can be prescription in high dose. It can be injectable, but we just use an over-the-counter daily. Well, you, you can't bake your skin, okay? But for your light skin, half hour would be great. <laughs> for my dark skin, I might need 45 minutes to an hour to get 15,000 units. The RDA, which is the amount that the government thinks we should take, is what do you think, about 400 units a day? Okay. We give usually about 10,000 units a day. People say, well, that's going to cause toxicity. You don't get toxic in the sun when you get 15,000. So I'm not really worried about it. I've never had anyone have a problem with that level. Um, IGF-1, that is analogous to how much growth hormone you have in your body. When that starts to drop down, we have what's called adult human growth hormone deficiency. People feel pretty terrible on that. We now have a supplement, which is a spray. You don't have to inject yourself anymore, which is very expensive, and you have to use a needle. We have a spray that goes under the tongue that's what's called a secretagog, and it actually stimulates growth hormone about 50 to 100%. So I've seen levels start to rise with that. Pregnenolone is a great hormone if you have brain fog because it stimulates brain activity. It stimulates the neurons to start speaking to each other. Now, my belief is that testosterone being low is the number one cause of depression in our country. That's been my experience. People that have low testosterone, now who has testosterone, men or women? Men have it? Both have it. Do women need it as much as men? Yes. Absolutely. Do they need as much as men? No. They need more than men? Well, I'll tell you a funny story. I've had a, f a flock of women in the last few weeks who have come in, I give them a teeny dose, because women actually only need about 100 times less than a man. They get full function on that. They have come in with their testosterone levels to be higher than normal men levels. And I smile when they come in because I look at their labs ahead of time. And I go, having a good time? <laughs> and uh, several women have said that it's brought back their relationships with their spouse mm -hmm. because it's no different in a man or a woman. Women are usually the women, uh, the women are usually in sex, are the ones who sit back and go, no, no, no. But if they have testosterone on board, then they're yes, 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 and then they send their husbands in to match them. Right? <laughs> so women cheat. They take too much because it feels good. It gives you know, the joie de vie of life. I believe that testosterone is the fountain of youth, the absolute fountain of youth. I don't think anyone should have low levels of testosterone. It's great for building bone. 
we find that most people that come into our office either have osteopenia, meaning some bone loss, or osteoporosis. We have a DEXA scan, so it's very easy for us to put someone through that, and that convinces them they need to take care of themselves better. <coughs> Fosamax doesn't do the job. We're fine. I had two women come in the office about two weeks ago with fractured jaw. Have you guys heard about that? Mm -hmm. Osteonecrosis of the jaw from taking these biphosphonates. They make the bones look better when you do a DEXA scan because you have dead bone sitting there. So you're building bone on top of dead bone. Is that good bone? It's not good bone to me. When you stimulate bone using bioidentical hormones, it's beautiful bone. It's like brand new bone. Um, insulin and fatigue and cravings. Um, with the nutrition program that we're going to address a little bit tonight, we use what are called low glycemic index foods. We don't do any dieting. The word diet is not in our office because that's associated with losing a lot of weight then gaining it back, being hungry and starving. We don't do that. We just change the type of foods such that the insulin does not go up. We want the insulin to stay low. We want the inflammation to stay low. When insulin goes up, it's going up because the sugar is high. You eat a food that, that converts to glucose in the blood very quickly, and then you'll find the insulin goes up. Guess what happens to the sugar? It goes way down. Ever hear of hypoglycemia? We create our hypoglycemia. If we eat enough protein and vegetables, there's no thing as hypoglycemia. It's gone. Treatment, what do we do? Sleep, very, very important. Number one, sleep. If you're not sleeping, you're going to be miserable. Anyone here not sleep a little bit? You're a good sleeper? Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay, when we don't sleep, we're miserable. There was a study done at Northwestern University many, many years ago. They took college students that were extremely healthy. They sleep deprived them, and guess what disease they all ended up with? Sorry? Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia. That's right. They all had all these type of symptoms. Then they let them go back to sleep again. Guess what they had after that? <coughs> Nothing. Nothing. They were perfect again. So sleep is probably one of the most important things that we can do in our practice to help people. And for some people, it's very, uh, it's very difficult because some people are addicted to medicine. And it's very, if you're on a benzodiazepine, that has to be weaned real slow. It stays in the system for about six months after you stop using it. A benzodiazepine, Ativan, Xanax, uh, there's lookalikes like um, Valium is like that. Um, Ambien is not that, but it's similar. So all of the hypnotic sleep agents do the same thing. They're very addictive. And uh, once you start, it's very difficult to stop. I recommend if people have to do that, they should take trazodone, which is called Deseril, and it's non-addictive. It's very sedating. It's not as powerful, but it does the job for most people. Why do you talk about HGE up here? Because it's a precursor to serotonin, and it helps people sleep. Does it help depression? It can help depression, sure. Yes, sir. What about red wine? Red wine, the worst thing you can do. And I'll tell you why. It's a, it's a wine industry fallacy. So what they're doing is they're giving you resveratrol, which is a great antioxidant for the heart, in a, in a poison. They're giving you a toxin, but they're giving you a nice antioxidant in it. So am I totally against it? You know, in the work I do, people come in who want to be highly tuned. So they want to lose weight. They want to get in shape. They want to keep their risk factors for disease low. And I, I work with people to get off of alcohol if they're willing to do that. If they're not, it's okay. My job as an educator, it's not to make anyone do anything. I love people before and after whatever they want to do. But no, it's not a good way to get an antioxidant. Get the pure form. It's available all over. Hormone balance, very important in this. If hormones are out of balance, you're going to be miserable. How many people say they're miserable once in a while? Infection, we have to look for infection because that can cause a lot of pain, a lot of fatigue, drains the body. We've, we're starting to use um, undosinoic acid to kill candida, um, finding that people that have the candida overgrowth, it can shut down any of the syndrome. It looks exactly like fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue. Fish oil, curcumin, things like that are great to get rid of inflammation. Nutrition, so big issue I've danced around a little bit. Um, Anti-inflammatory diet is the anti-candida diet. It starves the candida. You don't feed it sugar. You don't give it foods that turn to sugar. It lives on sugar. 